promotional consideration paid for by the following. Cone Ice. Cone Ice is a shaved ice truck that brings a one-of-a-kind tropical experience to you. Guests can flavor their own Kona Ice on our signature flavor wave, dance to our island music tunes, and enjoy a nutritious and delicious treat. Contact Jeremy and Marissa at 352-403-0515. Don't forget to follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Pat's Taps at Catfish Johnny's. Pat's Taps is Lake Penasofsky's newest tap room, offering 14 rotating craft beers on tap. We also offer bottled domestic beers, seltzers, ciders, and wine, as well as a variety of appetizers and puffs. Our family-friendly tap room is a great place to come hang out and enjoy some one-of-a-kind craft beer. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or the Untapped app. Is the exterior of your home or business covered in dirt, mildew, or mold? Driveway or walkway stain? Pressure King can make your siding, deck, vents, and concrete look new again with no damage. Pressure King has cleaned the exterior of houses and businesses all over Sumter County area. Usually it takes less than a day and costs less than you would expect. Call AJ at 352-457-7209. Catfish Johnny's Restaurant, serving the Lake Penasofsky and surrounding areas since 1990. For the last 33 years, we have strived to serve great food at great prices and a friendly, casual atmosphere. If seafood isn't your thing, our burgers or wings are the best around. We have daily specials too. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Central Screen Services LLC, in collaboration with Mask and Sons Incorporated. All screen services are available. We offer a variety of colors, durability, and sizes for all your screening needs. Pool areas, patios, and more. Call 352-603-4099 today for your free estimate. Proudly serving all of Citrus, Sumter, Hernando, Lake, and Pasco counties. To find out more, check them out on Facebook. Welcome back to the Go Blaze Show. I'm your host, Billy Goble, and uh, today we have a special guest. This is a, a good friend of the, of the program, um, one of our first guys to go out and, and, and get it. Mm-hmm. Um, this is um, a, a guy who's just, every time I see him on Facebook, he's always just just doing what he does best, and, and he's always plugging his, his uh, fitness program and making kids better, and that's just what it's all about. So uh, I want to welcome uh, Clinton Hart. Clinton, welcome to the show, bro. Hey, glad to have me. Glad to be here, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's it's an honor. Um, you know, what are you up to these days? What are you? Trying to get people healthy. Trying to <laughs> yeah. keep people motivated. Yeah. Uh, pour, pour what was poured into me and other people and uh, just get results for people, and whether gotcha. it's mentally, physically, you know, um, just doing as much as I can while I'm here. Gotcha. Um, so uh, I had Coach Sherman on um, last time, and we kind of started from the beginning. So uh, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. Um, let's go back to high school. Mm. and uh, Way back then. Way back in the day. <laughs> um, and what, let's see. When, when did you start playing football? When's the first time you ever played Oof. football? Uh, probably I would, if I had to guess, you know, the age, I was probably about seven, seven, eight, seven okay. with the bandits, with the bandits. That's bandits. right. Back in the day, G Bo farmer was one of, and Steve Davis. That's right. That's right. Uh, that. rest in peace. Uh, Steve, a great coach. Um, you know, they were my coaches back in the day and they kind of molded us from then on up. Gotcha. And that's where it started. Um, so you played Played bandit, and then you went to middle school. Mm. Uh, middle school, I didn't play football. Oh, and oh you and did, Jiki, yeah, I didn't play. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't um, wasn't fo- wasn't focused on grades as gotcha. much. I was a class clown kind of guy. Yeah. But they did have a tumbling team that I joined because I couldn't play basketball or football because of my grades. So I joined gotcha. the tumbling team. So I was gotcha. I was flipping at doing front flips and back flips during <laughs> during gotcha. the halftime of gotcha. the basketball games. Gotcha. So. Um, Tumbling team, <laughs> grades not too good. Seems like it's a reoccurring theme at that age. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got a lot going on as a as a youngster. And yeah. 
you know, trying to be a class clown and uh, trying to get liked by all the little girls and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> kind of distracted me from focusing on what was important. Gotcha. So, but, I, you know, I grew up doing f flips and stuff on mattresses in my neighborhood. So I was like, uh, they got a tumbling team and me and my good friends who's, you know, uh, unfortunately not around anymore. He's, you know, he's not, he's not past anything, but he's just not around. He's got some trouble, but gotcha. one of my really good friends, we, we joined, I won't say his name, but we joined the, the tumbling team and, um, we, you know, we did flips and stuff at, at half times of basketball games. That's how we kind of stayed gotcha. involved in sports in some way. Gotcha. Now, did you play, did you have, you, you weren't playing football, but did you play ba basketball? I didn't play my seventh grade year. I ended up playing my eighth grade year. Gotcha. Um, I, I got tired of doing flips and said, I got to get at least some C's <laughs> so I can play. Right, right. <laughs> flip the grades. Yeah, I got to flip get, the grades yeah, at least. Yeah. So I had to flip the grades you gotcha. know, so I can get an opportunity to play. Um, so baseball, I know you're a big baseball player too, so. Well, that's one sport, you know, um, that you, you know, you can play at a younger age, you, you know, T-ball, you know, so I played that all right. the way up and, um, you know, baseball is, uh, you know, you can, we rode our bikes to practice and got a lot of guys, they don't do that no more because they used to, you know, have a, a field up town Webster and mm -hmm. we used to just get together and ride our bikes uh, through town and go to practice and. And that's what it was, and it was just fun. Um, you built great friendships, right? And um, we we played, and you know, and, and took that all the way through. And that's kind of what you know stuck with me is, you know, that the camaraderie of you know having a lot of young friends and and riding bikes and and then playing baseball. You can do that so young that it kind of just you know something that you always was able to do, right? And and had fun doing. So I just played it all the way through high school. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, you know, the Webster League back in the day. That was yeah, uh, that so that was Webster the, Flea Market, the crown jewel back then. <laughs> Mama's restaurant, Mama's, uh, yeah, Bushnell Electronics, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Central uh, Packing, Central Packing. Oh man, Farmers Market, Farmers yeah, Market. Yeah. I, I tell I, you, I was on the Farmers Market. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Farmers Market. That was uh, Rick Shirley days back yep, in the day. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but um, so you, so, so then you you moved on and and you went to uh, up to up to high school. Yeah, um, and then freshman year you. Freshman year I came and uh, I was actually in a different position and you know Coach Sherman kind of paid attention and he knew I could throw the ball pretty good. Right. And he asked me that I you know want to try playing a quarterback and I said I'll try you know uh, and I ended up enjoying it you know because I always try to saw myself as a, a leader type right. mentality and a quarterback is pretty much the leader of the offense That's right. um and so you know I, I had a really rough attitude though coming into high school you know because you know you grow up and not having a lot of things you know you grow up with a lot of frustration anger right because a lot of kids have and you don't have so right. it's kind of and and so I was able to chant, you know, I was able to get that channel, that anger. And Coach Sherman was one of the guys that came along that um, helped me channel that gotcha. frustration, gotcha. you know, and anger. Because he saw me like on the, you know, the TVs, you got the U channel, yeah, you know, and you got the rabbit ears back right, in the day right. where you got to move them around and find some type of, some, some type of picture. Right. And that was me coming in high school. I, you know, he would, you know, back then we had a tree. You know, you know, the tree that they cut down. I hate they yeah. cut the tree down. Yeah. And when you get in trouble, he's like, go to the tree. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I would just start walking and, and, and I would come back. I would jog, but then I'd come back and say, go again. You know, since you want to walk. <laughs> you know, like, So he, he kind of helped me. He, um, you know, funny story about that tree is when it, 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 it finally kind of started dying, died, you know, dying falling away. apart. Yeah. Um, they had the guys come out and trim it. Mm -hmm. And um I think Coach Lawrence uh, stopped practice and had a moment of silence because <laughs> really? he's yeah. dying. They all took their hats ah. off, and it was it was a it was a dying. Ah man, they should have contacted yeah. some of us <laughs> some of us old guys. He said, "Hey, listen, the tree." Yeah. and uh, the guy cutting the tree was like, "What's going? What's on? going on?" And I'm out there, you know, I'm out there with him in the. Oh man, I was like, they're 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 paying they're paying they're paying their paying their respects. Their, I'm telling you, and that. the guy was like, "Are you kidding me?" I was like, "You don't you don't you don't, have a clue, you don't understand you don't if you're not from Sumter That's County right. and you play Sumter County football." Yeah. South Southern football, you would not understand about no, the tree. No. Everybody thinks Coach Everett did that, but that was way before, <laughs> no. way before Earl. I think Earl. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Earl had to go to, ever had to go to the tree. Yeah, but, I don't know. I know we went quite a bit, you know, and you know, so it it was a good thing. Yeah. So, uh, 
So uh, Coach Sherman saw the potential mm-hmm. and uh, kind of harnessed that. What are you going to be? And and uh, so where'd you start out at? Like uh, I was at a tight end, I think. Um, and then um, I got there, and and then he started seeing me throw the ball, and it's like okay, yeah, because yeah, JV and people don't know this about my class. We never lost a home game oh, really? my whole high school career. Wow. That's that's impressive. We, we never lost wow. a home. We were undefeated as JV, yeah. and then we never lost a home game. Wow! As a, a you know, through my whole high school career. Wow! So we we took playing at South Sumter extremely personal. Right. Um, when teams came in there, wow. you're not gonna come to our house and disrespect us and and take something that we work hard for, and we and, and that's what I miss about high school. I love this about Sumter County is you know. You you're free either from Center Hill, Lake Penasovsky, right? Bushnell, or Webster, or Frog Alley, Frog Alley, or Terrytown. <laughs> you're oh, Frog you, Alley, you know. Um, and you know most of the people on your team most of your life, so right. you play with passion for those guys. So right. Now it's kids from everywhere jumping all over the place. No no commitment. No yeah. different counties. Different counties. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And so it's really. Um. It's funny you say tight end because um, that's um, it's where like there's a couple other players. I think Devin Pappenheim that ended up mm-hmm. playing D one D one uh, tackle tackle yeah uh, defensive end or whatever it was. He started off as a as a tight end and yeah. it's like um, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, as a at, a at a young age, sometimes you really don't know. You yeah. know, you got guys that's athletic and you put them in positions that can help the team. And then they blossom into something that, you know, where they belong pretty right. much. And so, you know, I think my sophomore year, me and Jerry Davis end up being uh, alternate quarterbacks. He would run into play. I would run into play, you know, in and out. Gotcha. And if, I got tired of that. I was like, mm, I, I got to be full-time quarterback. Yeah. I'm going to beat him out next all-time year. All-time QB. Yeah, yeah I got to be all-time <laughs> QB. I can't be running plays in. You know, and that's when, you know, I had Fred Williams and Quinn Williams and all of them, and, you know, stem, stem, and my brother Kelly Hart as, right. as running back. And so it was, it was, I mean, it was a great opportunity to learn, but I wanted that full time position. Yeah. Um, then Coach Sherman was talking about those guys too. He's talking about Lester Moore. And, oh, great guys. Um, I love, I love the, all the guys I play with. How he kind of, it just kind of came in and it just, just kind of gelled. As it, a, it's, it, you know, as you, a, you don't get that a lot in high school no, now. You don't. It's, um, it's hard to, to find the right pieces to the puzzle, per se. And he was able to, he was able to harness all of that talent and put it all in one jar. Mm-hmm. And average, average. When I say average talent, he was able to push us and uh, and make us really care about one another to where we played for him, at the school, the program. Uh, we really and the fans just followed us everywhere. I mean, you right. get that from Sumter County football. Is right. It don't matter where you go, you're gonna have a the stands are going to be full across the board. Yeah. That's when I've, I've, you know, filming all those times, you hear the home side quite a lot and they, and they go, all right, South Southern fans. And they just as loud as the home side do. And they're, oh, they're 50 something yards across the way. <laughs> yeah. And they're just yeah. as loud as the, at the, as the home field. Yeah. Just, it's, it was, it was an honor playing uh, and growing up here and playing football here because, you know, you, you just don't get that anywhere now. Right. So it's, it's totally different. Um. Yeah. Coach Sherman, he, he's, I, I honored him last week. He's he's just one of those guys that just kind of took a a program that was I don't even know what the word is, but I mean my dad played before Coach Sherman got there, and, and I didn't no disrespect to anybody uh, any other coaches or anything, but but I was like I was telling Coach Sherman I said or as I introduced him I said you know nobody really got as far or did as much as he did. He he pretty much wrote the book. Well, I think, too, is I think he spent 35 years coaching the same high school. He I did. mean, that is unheard of. That's, yeah. um, but I think what Coach Sherman was different, where he was different at, with a lot of coaches that I've seen, you know, I've had some really good coaches, I had a couple of amazing coaches, Coach Sherman, Marty Scheinheimer. I'll, yeah, we're going to get to Marty because I got some questions about Marty. I'll, and, and to me, he was right up there about the passion and the love right. for the players, right? For the players, and I think Coach Sherman taking us home on that in that red truck <laughs> and, picking, red. and picking us up and yep. taking us and picking us up and yep. making sure we, 
that's the difference between a lot of coaches now, you know, um, it, and, and a coach that'll sit you down when, even when you're good, right. if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, right. he does that, you know, and, um, you know, I, I think he wrote the blue, you know, the book, like you said, he made a blueprint of how you should do it. Um, he, he mentioned that in, um, in the podcast earlier, he said, you know, we got here and he tried to figure out what worked and what didn't work. And then mm -hmm. you kind of make a, an assessment, you go, okay, what can we make this better? Mm -hmm. And then as the years go by, you know, it gets, it's a well-oiled machine. And it's just one of those things where you just, you know, you kind of get all the kinks out, you know, what works, what doesn't, you can try new things. I can't tell you how many times we've seen different offenses and <laughs> defenses and yep. oh, it ain't going to work, but yep. you know, it, it just, you know, at least he's, trying to yep. make it you know you yep. got to tweak it sometimes yep. you got to tweak it and it's it's kind of like i do my gym you know, every year you, you, know, yeah. you try to find out okay this didn't work as good last year let's i need to do this right here different or i need to add this or i need to right. take this away um or or trainers you know right. these trainers aren't you know don't have the vision for so i gotta you know find some training it's like players i gotta find players that believe in what i'm doing right you know the system and they're gonna they're gonna trust in the system and Raider football has been Raider football since, I mean, they still run right 24 left 25 for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I heard the story about that, how I, it was, I believe it was Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. They ran that office and they're like, coach, I think coach Thomas is already like at the beginning of the game. Hey, first play, we're going to write, run right 24. See if you can stop it. See if you stop and it. Just, just, and just, that's the mentality yeah. that I, I really enjoyed about it's me. It's you against him. Right. Us against you. Right. Man on man. Yep. You know we coming with you got to block it. Right. You got to stop it. So I mean, he was more so of, hey, listen, they know yeah. what we're gonna do. Do your job. Yeah. Let's run it down their throats and man oh man in football. Right. Well, it, and it's funny how look how look at Vince Lombardi. Mm -hmm. He um, he ran a sweep. And I know at the time that was probably you know that was a state of the art run yeah. play, mm -hmm. but. He ran that so he ran it so good he perfected it. Yeah, John Madden said he went to a convention to listen to him. Mm -hmm. He talked about the sweep, one play, one play for eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> he said I could probably get away with it probably thirty forty minutes. Thirty four. This yeah. was eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. Of yeah. I mean, you just perfect it. You perfect what you're good at. Right. You manage your weaknesses and right. maximize your strengths. And, and our strength was those plays that he built South Sumter football offenses on. And, right. And to this day, they still run that. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a staple, a staple point of their bread, offense. Bread and, bread and butter. butter. Bread and butter. Even in middle school. <laughs> yeah. And it, I mean, maybe you can – is it because of the simplicity of it? Like, you know, you get it in your head, you know where you're going. You know you it. Know, you don't want to throw so many a, plays out there. Yeah, a cluttered mind is a slow body. Right. You know, especially for athletes, young athletes. If you can make it simple – form um a, a good story is i i, I coached at o, oca or Cala christian academy uh they called me and said hey listen we need a head we need a head coach could you coach and i was like ah, and i'm like <laughs> so i go out there and i'm looking at my talent and i'm like okay <laughs> the wait, a minute. The test. wait a minute yeah I don't know because you know in, in, in christian schools eighth graders play on varsity gotcha you know uh so it's like Looking at the talent, and then I got this NFL mindset when I go in there as a co first time coaching. I'm right. like, oh yeah, we're gonna be checking the motions. We're gonna be checking the this. I'm checking the that. I'm like, in the first day, and I'm like, wait a minute, I got to throw everything I've learned <laughs> out. <laughs> we're, we're blitzing. I'm, I'm listen. The Mike backers blitzing on this flight. <laughs> I'm just I'm just naming plays yeah. where they know who's going where and what's going where, so they can play fast. Yeah. So just keep it simple. Yeah. Um, the simplicity part is uh, key. Yeah. Especially. So so we do. I've been coaching the Wolfpack for the mm -hmm. last two years. And um, we we are running the same style that we ran that we run in middle school, that That's we right. run in high school. So, yep. so these kids are getting in the in the in 10 years. They're going to be like, I've been doing this since I was seven years old. Right. They should be pros at it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm just, I'm curious to like, like who was coaching it? Uh, was that, was that Brantley? Was that the, 
Yeah. Um, well, Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Thomas, Thomas okay. was coaching okay. there I when remember, I was. I there. remember Brantley was there one time. Yeah, Brantley was there, and then he went to Cheney Brothers, and then Thomas came in. Gotcha. Um, Thomas is a good coach, but he wasn't from there. You know, he's oh, from. Oh yeah. He's from up in uh, Bronson area, some up somewhere up in that area. Okay. But they got him down to come coach, and you know, and he kind of tried to do things his own way. Right. You know, uh, and they didn't like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 They don't, yeah. No, you know, you know, Brantley's, you know, Brantley's a good a, a, a town guy. He's in for, he's from Ocala. And, right. And so, you know, and he can get sponsors and he, he's a, he's a good salesperson. He's right. A, he's a good car salesman. Right. He'll sell your car you don't even need. <laughs> <laughs> Selling eyes to an Eskimo. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> but he's, he's good. He's good at surrounding himself. A coach is a, you know, and one thing I say about Coach Sherman too, he wasn't just a facilitator who got good coaches around him because he had, we had great coaches around us. And that's what some head, a head coach right. is. Right. He's just a, you know, somebody who's running an organization or a team that has right. the good coaches around him. Right. Got a good OC, good DC. Yeah, I think that was one of his, like, a, a major attribute to his mm -hmm. success was Keith he a, Hallman he had a and, good and, and Ty Lawrence. Oh, he had a good group guys, of guys that have been there for Wh years. Todd Wordenberger. Yeah, Stan Coburn. Uh, uh, St you know, it just, he just had a good group of people. Oh, Wart I'm there. Yeah. Oh, Wurtenberger. Wurtenberger. I'm <laughs> telling you, that was my DB coach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just remember him at practice singing um, uh, some. Uh, I forgot some kind of R and B song. That's all. He was love. <laughs> it was one song he just kept. Yeah, he, he just kept singing. Yeah, um, he was. He was something. He's. I, I know he went up to Interlochen or something. He coached yeah. up there for a while, but um, yeah, great coach, great I guys. It, I think it was. I like the way you work it. That's. <laughs> I mean, it was. It was. It, it kind of themed the practice yeah. thing, but yeah, it was one of those deals. But he, I remember him. That was. I was there at the toward the end. But, yeah, of his. Of his uh, tenure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's he was a super nice guy. Um, I had him in classroom. He was oh yeah, great, super nice great guy. guy. Yeah. So, um, so Coach Sherman, you know, he always talked about how he what well, he talked about the other day. He said, you know, he was always getting a ride. So he understood mm -hmm. that that some kids they, oh. they need to be picked up and yeah, and uh, they don't have a ride. They don't and, have a ride. And the convenience of someone's mom or dad, they got to work and they got to work and, and so and. and, and you know, some people, some kids just, they lose out because of that. Right. Because they don't have the, they can't get there. Right. Um, and he was saying how, that's how he got to EKU. He was, you know, he told, he said his coach would call him and he never called him. And he's, and he had him, had, um, he had gotten a ride to the college and was like, hey, coach, you, he didn't call me back. And like, well, since you're here, you <laughs> might as well stay. Might as well stay. <laughs> I don't know if that would work now. Uh, no, 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 I don't know about now. Now, I don't think so. <laughs> Go, going up to Buffalo, be yeah. like, hey, yeah. you, know, since you're you here. better head on home. Buddy. <laughs> yeah, they don't care about that. Amtrak or something. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so 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 freshman year, you, you tied in, and then um, did you have a lot of playing time? Did you? Yeah, I mean – I've always been blessed with some talent and ability. I mean, I got I always had good, great hands. Uh, I was always mean, mean enough to play block, mean enough to tackle. Right. Um, you know, so I, I pretty much thought I can play anywhere on the field. Um, so it, it was just a position that was, you know, I can go do, um, and I can do it pretty well. And my sophomore year, I just wanted to be more involved with the ball. Right. And so, you know, change from quarterback, change to quarterback kind of gave me the opportunity. Right. Okay. So, sophomore year, you quarterback. Quarterbacking. Um, young guy leading. Scared to death. Oh, I bet. At times, 10th yeah. grade. I mean, going to play guys like Darren Hembrick and. Hembrick Brothers. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And Pasco. And they had like probably four or five D one, six, seven D one players. You know, I'm a sophomore, and my brother Kelly was running back, and he was considerably one of the best running backs I, I think that came through South Sumter. Gotcha. Um, and to be able to hand him the ball and turn around and watch him do stuff, yeah, was amazing. Yeah. Um, but when we went to Pasco, it was like they were head hunting him, and and they knew they had to stop him. And so seeing Darren Hamburg as a 10th grade, me as a 10th grade, and him as a senior, like 6'4", 225, 230, standing right in front of me with yeah. black paint dripping off of his face like 
Grown man. Yeah, grown, grown man. man. And I'm, and, you know, and he's man just child. looking at me with his eyes wide open. And right. I'm like, kind of scared to death. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, like I said, I, I don't. I, we we talked before the show about. I didn't even know there was a team here. Yeah. Um, and and that was just because of socially. It's small. You know, if you team. didn't live in Bushnell, yeah, you, you, don't, you, you I don't never, know. I didn't even know they had a state. I didn't even know there was high school. <laughs> you think when you're driving, you're not, you're not, you're just riding. Right, right. And, Especially uh, young, you're right. just not really sure what's and going on. You might be lucky to have a seatbelt back. Then, you know, <laughs> yeah. just, just go. <laughs> just, you're just hoping that you don't, you know, uh, you survive the the trip to Walmart. Yeah, or something, I know, you know? right. And uh, but I, I just don't. I never knew. So all these guys, like, I, and and the only reason why I knew some of them is because of family. Yeah, or, probably or like, her or relationships, right? Or, or like relatives. Le- Lester, I, I knew because of Corey. Right. I went to school with him, and uh, that was his big brother, and then um, uh, and your brother, yeah, and, piano. And, and and I knew, I knew, um, I, obviously with with you, it was when you were when I was in middle school, you you were kind of like. Uh, uh, like Patrick Mahomes type deal. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not trying to blow smoke. I'm just saying yeah. it, it. It was just that 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 status where yeah. everybody was talking about. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. you were up there. You were in the same conversation with you know after Friday night on Monday afternoon or Monday morning. Mm-hmm. You were in the same thing. What happened in the Pittsburgh game right. the day before or that right. night? Um, it, it it was just a you know small town mentality of, right. of this is our team and we represent them and. Like Texas football, everybody yeah. everybody's got the everybody papers knows. on the, on the yeah. fridge and yeah, and um, you know it's just one of those things. But um, yeah, I that I, I think my first memory is the Santa Fe game. Yeah, and uh, was it tough? That was a good one. That was a good. I, I, and I my my parents never wanted to go. So <laughs> that was a good one. So I missed out on so many good games. But that I was mean, a good one. Um, so so junior year, you you're kind of. Yeah, getting. I'm the I'm the guy. You're the guy now. I'm the I'm the guy. I'm 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 the guy that they're depending on to lead the team and right. And I I did that and um we I listen we we had a lot of great guys on that team from Tony Gavin to Ladova Gibson to yeah. Matthew Simmons to Brad to David LeHue a lot of guys that uh, contributed to um a lot of all of the success. You know I was good, right? A good talent, but I had a lot of Great guys around me that kind of contribute. team effort. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Of course, and that's the thing is I've never seen. I never really thought of you as a selfish person. You no. always put the team. You know, you were you were the one that people were talked about more but so. It was, yeah, it is, but it was a team effort, yeah, was, and I've never was, gotten that feeling like you were you were the guy that was. Yeah, you know it was mean? a it was a like I said, it was a lot of you, it's you know, a lot of great guys contributed to all those wins right. at home. Um, and it just being a quarterback, you 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 catch the the good and the bad. Yeah. When you win and you hey you 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 know you this, but when you are losing, you're the reason. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> like a head coach. Like a head coach. Like a head coach. Yeah. So so you have to take that you know and understand to put it in a jar and say this. When we win, it's us. When we lose, it's us. Right. And you got to kind of try to keep illustrating that week right. in and week out. Now, um, as far as high school football. I know I haven't really gotten into your senior year, but so far, what what was the best game you played in? Ah, that Santa Fe game was good, but I think Coach Sherman had me kind of a hypnosis come in. Oh, you know, he, he came in to um, I think it was might have been my junior year to the high school, and we were playing in the playoffs. We were playing uh, North Marion. They had a really good quarterback named Gerald Neesman. He was like a four three guy, and he was. They were all talking about him. Gotcha. And he was a North Marion coach, and they were expected to beat us. And um, he wanted me really relaxed for that game. I guess I don't know what he thought. <laughs> I mean, he, so they took me in the library, and and I remember sitting down, and uh, some lady was talking to me, and she was talking, and they told me to pretend I was on the island, and all this those things, and I just felt very relaxed, and and I just remember s- saying when I snapped my fingers, you're going to feel so calm. And she did it. I got up and I had the best game of my, I think one of the best games of my high school career. And I think the paper read, um, heart hypnotizes foes (laughs) because they heard what I had, what I did that week. Okay. Uh, Yeah. And so, you know, had me on the front of the paper and, you know, wow, I think I had a ball head then, (laughs) but I still have that paper at home and it's, it's, 
it was pretty interesting. It was the first time I ever had that done to me. Yeah. But I, you know, Coach Sherman said, "Hey, listen, Boo, I, you know, Boo, I have somebody I want, I want you to sit with and talk to." And I'm thinking, I'm just going to be talking to somebody. And yeah. then I get in there, I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it lets me know that he felt um, a need that he he wanted me to be calm. He wanted me he, he, like I had a big responsibility. Right. You know, he wanted to make sure that that the I was in a position of relax and I could mm-hmm. make good decisions and I I was mean I was on target. Right. I was on target with my throws and everything. It was pretty awesome. Do you remember the score? I think we ended up beating them by to, yeah, by a couple touchdowns, to, but okay. yeah, it wasn't big a big blowout cuz they no. were a pretty good team, but yeah. but it was But it two was, touchdowns to a big game or a yeah. big team, that's a good, that's a big yeah. big deal. Big deal. That's not, that's yeah. something that um and the guys are the guys were at Neesman. I mean, Coach Sherman did this really well. He did this really well. And I, yeah. <laughs> whatever player they had that was the player that the marquee player, mm-hmm. that's all he wanted to shut down. Right. He made us focus on that player to where yeah. he talked about him so much and bragged about him all week long to where we wanted to literally take him out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not in a bad way, take yeah, him yeah, out, yeah. but just like eliminate him. When Brian Hogerbrook was the guy at Wildwood, yeah, he was all over, and Lester almost killed him, <laughs> yeah, you know, on a screen <laughs> and took him out of the game. I was like, but that's what he would do. He would just rep up a guy so much that right. we wanted to eliminate him, right? And we did that with Neesman and Hogerbrooks and every every big time player that came into South Sumter, right? Um, yeah, that's funny you say that because you know he's he's always been a planner. Mm-hmm. You know, and he mot- and he's a great motivator. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you you don't even have to play, and right. you can just sit there you, you and talk it. to him. You feel it, yeah. You feel it. How he's he's very passionate about it, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that's what he wants to coach right now. I can feel it. Oh, I, I, you know what? <laughs> I didn't get to ask him. I was like, you, you still got it? Yeah, you, you want to you, 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 you go back out there? You want to go back? Out. Yeah, but I think he, I think he really would. I think it's uh, you know everybody gets in that predicament where they it's. It, they know it's time to go, or yeah. They, but but then they go. I still got. I still, still got. Look at Brady. Oh, I know. Oh, he might comes back again. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So I'm hearing it. <laughs> it's like I, I think they're just doing that to mess with the ESPN. Oh my gosh! He's like gets home and like sitting there like I wonder. I think I can still go. <laughs> you're you're like I wonder if there's having a they have a practice coming up. I know, I know, right? I think I can still do. I this. know. People ask me all the time. You can play still. I'm like. No, I look like I can play still. I'm not going out. But, but inside. <laughs> but inside, yeah. uh, take a hit. I might get a little dizzy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, senior year, mm-hmm. um, let's see. What is there someone uh, – what was the biggest game of your senior year? You My say? senior, uh, Jacksonville Bowls. Oh, yeah. Bowls, yeah. Yeah, they come in. They came in and they were ranked in the nation – they got all these D1 players. They got like 90 players. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got we got we got 33 strong and 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 and, and, and proud. Yeah, and proud. Yeah. And and probably 15 of us play everything from yeah. <laughs> kickoff to yeah. kickoff return. Yeah. So teams that had that many players would beat us because they were fresh. Right. And they had two platoon. Right. So whereas you may play defense then I go to safety and play offense then I go to safety. And then you got kickoff, and you got this, and you got that. Right. So, and then you got kickoff return. You know. So, but when they came in, we just attacked them. I think we beat them thirty-three to six. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and it was just we jumped on them so fast. We jumped on them so fast that they didn't even know what hit them. I mean, Coach Sherman put me in the backfield the first play. I'm pretty sure they didn't plan on me being a running back. And so, because look, both looking playing, around checking, like, yeah. Hey, wait a minute, we didn't practice minute, this. This was on film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he put me in first play. I remember last like yesterday, first play of the game. He, it was a, it was a halfback pass from me. You know, he oh, tossed yeah. me the, the. You know, Tristan Harrison was a quarterback, mm-hmm. second string. He tossed me the ball. I started to run, and I hit a Dovic on a post deep. And it just took the air out of him. Like, wait a minute. We didn't yeah. practice on him being in the backfield. Yeah, exactly. And then the next play, same thing, but I run it. You know, so they're on the heels. Like, if it's a pass, it's a run. So he did a great job scheming yeah. up teams and, and planning for stuff like that. So it was almost it was almost like your version of the RPO. Yeah. 
but I can, but, I, yeah, yeah, I an got early an version. Yeah, yeah, I got an option to run yeah. it. Or, yeah, and and it worked. Right. And that was you know we beat them thirty three to six, and like I said, we we just attacked them. Yeah, I think I, I, a lot of people don't understand how just beating bowls is like when the Death Star blew up. Oh, you know, it yeah. was like, I, I, and I I really dislike private schools because of bowls, right? Because you know they were the team that kept getting in our way when it came to us trying to get it to state, right? It's like we always got to go through bowls, and they got yep. all of these recruits that they pay. I think it's like eighty thousand, seventy, eighty thousand dollars to go to school there. So they got all these scholarship guys. Yep. It's like IMG. Uh, it was like an IMG back yep. then. Yep. And, and you got all these guys, and they're playing little Bushnell. Why they got to come? Why we got to yep. go through Jacksonville? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that was I made a comparison to Coach Sherman. I said um, last week. I said um, something about. <clears throat> You you get through one of them, mm-hmm. and then it's it's like going from a bar fight to a street fight. Yeah. you know, you go outside and you're like, oh, here we go again, man. Yeah, I another. Day. I understand how the playoffs work. You're going to get better teams. Yeah, I'm better. But team. it, but for some reason, it was just like, what what can, can we get a break? Yeah, this one time. I mean, yeah, I mean, you got guys, you got a team. Even like we're now with them, they're struggling. I mean, to get through. Um, what's the team in Orlando that that comes over here? And, oh, Bishop Moore. No. Oh. Um, the one that beat them in the playoffs. Oh, Coco. Coco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they get a quarterback coming driving from Sea Breeze yeah. or Daytona. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a long bus ride. That's a long bus ride. I mean, <laughs> gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, and then you got to face teams like that. Yeah, so right. they got to find a way because they're going to see them again. Right. Um, yeah, I I have no doubt that we're going to see Coco quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, go see them. And it's. I mean, How do you beat them? You gotta, yeah. you just gotta prepare really well to beat a team like that. And I think, I, I think our coaches, our staff, as, um, as a whole, mm-hmm. they put a lot of people don't understand this, and they don't, they don't either understand or they don't know this. Right. But there's a lot of pre- preparation, preparation, lots for I each coach, game. And I coach at yes. TCI. I know. And you knew how it was playing. And it's playing. Ha- it hasn't changed. Yeah. Um, but um, going week to week. And it mm. doesn't matter if you're playing Chris River, yeah, or Coco. The preparations, the preparation doesn't change. It's the same thing. And we t- and, that, and I've I've heard them relentlessly tell our kids, look, just because they haven't won a game or right. they won one game this week or this this season, don't turn your back on them because that's that's a trap game. That's we're gonna. Yeah. They're looking for that, you know. I think kids these days, if they would take the approach that coaches take, they will, the team would be that much better. I don't think kids study film. I don't think they know how to study film. They only watch film when the coaches make them watch film. Right. You know, instead of going home. Or they home. put a highlight tape yeah. in there or something. You but, know. but they have so much access to huddle. Yeah. If You know, if they took the time to study film and learn how to study film, it would make them that much better. Oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, I have a guy that, a uh, kid safety that I trained from uh, Forrest. You know, he's about 6'2". His dad's sick, and I train him, and and then we watch film every Thursday. He brings, he comes, and we just watch film. Right. Uh, and he was an average guy. Right. Uh, we broke down film, and every team he played, and I said, "Look at this right here. This is a, this is a tendency. This is a tendency." Right. He had five, six interceptions, and now he's got a chance to go to college. He'll be a senior this year. Oh wow! But that's just every Thursday he would come up there, and I would break down film with him. Right. And that's all we would do. But we didn't have that. No. You only watch film when you watched it with the team. Right. Exactly. You didn't have the individuals and no. like going home and having the, the luxury of watching it on even on your phone. Now. Even you on your phone. Your own. If guys would do that, they'd be so much better. Oh yeah. Um so you you graduate Yeah. Graduate high school. Scared to death, don't scared. know what oh. don't, I think you're in the same boat as everybody. Everybody, right? everybody's the same. I'm literally, I'm literally crying walking down the aisle. I, like, I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you got to think, you know, young, and you're like from Webster, and you're popular, and right. everybody's calling your name every right. day. And boo hard, boo hard, you know, you know this and that, and yeah, and high school kids looking up to you, and it's I, like it's over. Yeah, and so I'm walking down the aisle, and I'm like, you know, crying, and you know, I'm ups- you know, I'm, I'm hurting. I'm right. like. Because I don't really know what to expect right. going into the next level, and um, I end up foregoing going to junior college over up in Georgia because I wanted to stay close to home. Right. 
you know, I had opportunity to play at UCF, but I didn't pass the test. Gotcha. Uh, so they said, do you want to send you to Cochrane? And I said, oh, that's too far. I don't want to go, you know, way up there. You know, I want to stay close to my mom because right. everything wasn't perfect at home. So right. I wanted to help out. Help out. Yeah. And so uh, baseball is something I went back to. Right. Because I always played it. So right. I said, I'm going to walk on at CFCC and I'm going to stay here for two more years. And I'm going to transfer to UCF after I get my AAA. Gotcha. And that was the plan. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Um. You, you said you were emotional going down the. That, yeah. See, and now I cried because I was because I made it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, yeah. I was on the, I was on the other, the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. I had horrible grades. <laughs> I'm mean, close. If, I'm pretty close. <laughs> if things hadn't happened, like if, the, if things were, didn't change at all, I could probably write a book on how to go to high school, not do anything. Not do anything. <laughs> because, uh, and, and you know what? I wasn't I wasn't a test taker either. Right. No, uh, that's not me. And I remember the um, the HSCT. Oh. And I'm like, I remember me and, and another guy, he had great grades, mm -hmm. and I did not. And we're in the same boat. Okay, right. if you do not pass, you do not graduate. You do not graduate. And I'm like, I deserve this because <laughs> I, I procrastinated. And I, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I slacked. And slacked on it. This guy put everything in. Everything in. Yeah. And, I, I, from, and I didn't understand it until I saw that happen, and I go, you know, some people just aren't test takers. Some people are. And I'm the, I'm the same way. Like, I'm, like not, I'm a hands-on guy. Like, you yep. teach me a, a, a skill. If I see it. Right. Seeing is believing. I yep. always said yep. that. So, but if you give it to me on paper, I'm like, what, yeah, what I'm like yeah, I'm not going to read it. I don't, I tell people now, do not text me a long text. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading it. <laughs> I'm skimming it. Do not text me a long text. You're not even time. hitting the view all. You're, <laughs> just, like, you're like, um, don't text me a long text. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I'm going to skim past it. I'm going to look at what, what uh, some key points, and I'm going through it. Like in a paper. Every, <laughs> every time in the, yeah. when I got the paper for when I played, I'm like, I'm looking for my name. I'm not reading all that crap. Yeah. You're like, I don't see heart. I don't see heart. I'm not reading all the rest. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's how I am. Even text people yeah. tell you now that know me. Yeah. That's it. They'll say before they even text it, they'll text a long, they say, I know you're not going to read this. <laughs> Why are you texting me? That so I'll never, I'm never going to send you an article or anything. Don't, okay. Okay. Don't, I, I, I know that now. Yeah. Uh, don't middle, do it. Middle, middle note. Middle there. note. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> Okay, so you go to CFCC and you play and you play baseball. Yeah, I walked on to baseball okay. there, actually because they didn't have the scholarships, which was well. When I went out there, actually they were we were pl we were playing basketball in the gym. Okay, and they said they're having baseball tryouts. I said I'm gonna go try out. Yeah, and they said you gonna go try out in those shorts and that tank top, <laughs> and I said yeah. And I went out in basketball shoes, and I, I asked the coach, can I, does anybody have an extra glove I can borrow? And yeah. and, I, and they gave me a glove, and I went in the left field. Every yeah. player was in left field, cause, or they was going to play outfield, because right. you go from left to center. Right. And so I threw a couple a couple guys through from, I think, from outfield to home, and I always had a strong arm. Right. And I threw one ball, and that was it. Yeah. And one of the guys said, God dang, Clint, you got a hose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they, from then on, they, he said, listen, can you hit and BP? And it threw BP and I was hitting it over the giant wall into the street. You know, I can hit a fastball, I can yeah. hit a, but I couldn't hit a curve. <laughs> you're like, I'm you're like, like Joe you're like, you're, Yeah, like Serrano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, all right, throw him a curve. No, 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 <laughs> <sorry. laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm all on my front foot and looking <laughs> silly. So I was like, you know, I would just almost want to tell the pitcher, hey, please don't throw me a curve. <laughs> right, down yeah, the right, middle, down middle. right down the middle. <laughs> so he was lobbing the ball, and I'm, God, and I'm killing it, I'm killing it. He's like, listen, if you come out, uh, uh, you know, you, you'll make the team, and next year I'll give you a scholarship. Yeah. So then I said, okay, now I got to get my classes right. And I'm not a guy that likes to listen yeah. to teachers talk a lot, and yeah. trust professors, and they yeah. sit there talking, and I'm like, I wonder what they're doing in the gym right now. Yeah, you're, you're 19. You're like, uh. I'm like, are they playing basketball again? Like, so yeah. I had to figure out what was good for me. Right. And so I started cutting hair for school. I okay. went to school first. I said, can I, can I go to school for cosmetology and barber and still play sports? 
And like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's me. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. That's my thing. Because <laughs> I cut hair when I was a kid. Right. When I was a teenager to make money. So I was like, I can cut hair for, and do hair for eight hours, seven, eight hours and still play sports. Yes. You know, you say that now that I remember that because being in school, kids would get their hair cut and they're like, boo did it. And I'm like, <laughs> Who is this boo kid? <laughs> yeah. Like boo who? I'm like, who is this guy? And 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 they would yeah. they would cut I, you and that and then that that, and hair. that was an early memory of you as well. Yeah. Cutting hair. Um, yeah, cutting hair. I remember I remember those days. Yeah. Where you, cutting hair. So. That was a thing, man. I know I don't I can't I can't name off anybody specifically, but I oh do, yeah, I, I used do to cut remember. Hair. I used to cut I want to say Booby used to come yeah, to you. Booby. Yeah, yeah. Um, he get, and he would like do the designs and yeah, stuff in the I, back, I, and yeah. I'm like I'm like yeah. This guy's great. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm, I, I almost told my dad I want to go to see Boo Hart, like, get my hair cut. And, and he's like, he'd be like, who was this? Who was this? Who yeah. was this guy? So it was, it was, it was great, man. Um, and I warmed up with a football. When I got my scholarship, I always took a football to practice. Right. And so I would warm up with that because I was a quarterback. Right. And the coach. Still said, keeping it in the. Yeah. Yeah. Because I said, I'm going to play football. I got to hold on to that. I got to keep right. that in the memory bank. Right. And so the coaches said, you're playing the wrong sport, I think. You sure you're playing the right sport? Because they would see me throw it. And they're like, you need to be playing something yeah, else. right. And so, no, no yeah, I'm going to play football, but I'm focusing on baseball right now. And um, ended up playing there for two years, going to Junior World College World Series. Wow. Uh, up in Colorado, uh, Grand Junction, a great uh, opportunity. Um, I didn't even know I was drafted by the Anaheim Angels, actually. Oh, yeah. wow. I didn't even know that I, either. Yeah, I got drafted like in the hundreds and something round. That's cool. But I didn't even know that until yeah. I left CFCC. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. and um, Nobody told you? No, I didn't even know it because they contacted Wouldn't you, me. Didn't that something you want to know? I know, right? <laughs> but I think that what happened was um, he knew I was going to play football, so it wasn't a pursuit, you know, the coach, the, right. the college coach. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, he's like, you know, he's go, he's a football, he's going to play football. And, yeah. You know, and so... Um, uh, after CFCC, I contacted Gene McDowell, who was UCF's head coach at the time I graduated. Now, he was their head coach in 94, 95. Right. He stopped coaching for a period of five years after I graduated. And so I contacted him because he was con he was coaching the Tallahassee Thunder team up in Tallahassee. Okay. The arena inaugural season, the right. first year. The first year. And so he got back in the coaches five years later. Gotcha. And so happened, I looked him up and I was like, well, dang, he recruited me in high school. Let me see if he remembers me. And he kind of faintly remembered, you know, oh, yeah, I kind of remember. He probably was just telling me that because, you know, just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't remember. So, um, it was raining. It was raining. <laughs> had an umbrella. <laughs> but... <laughs> Raining cats and dogs. Yeah, it was. I was. We were at the market. You know, <laughs> yeah. Saw so them. yeah. So um, then uh, he said, "Yeah, come on up. We got a tryout." You know, it was about three hundred guys out there. Oh wow. Oh, there's so many guys. And at Coach Sherman, I told Coach Sherman, and this is what people don't know. After leaving high school, uh, college, I, w I came to Coach Sherman. I said, "I want to go to the NFL." Right in his office, I said that. He was sitting across from me like you are. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to go to NFL coach in four years. He said, he didn't even laugh. He didn't even like joke and say, that's not going to happen. He said, well, how are you going to do it? Yeah. And I said, all right. I said in my mind, he didn't shoot me down. So Right. Maybe there's a way. Yeah, maybe it is a way. Right. And a lot of kids get shot down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too quick. Yeah. Parents say, hey, I want to do this. Oh, you ain't going to do that. Yeah. Oh, you, ain't, you can't do that. Yeah. You just killing the kids' dreams. Yeah. Mainly because they don't want to do it. They don't want to do you it. You know what I mean? They don't, they want, they don't want to go through it. They right. don't want to be bothered. Right. So for any parents out there, I would say, please don't do that to your kid. Yeah. If they want to do something and they and it's something productive and yeah. it's a dream, don't shoot down their goals and dreams. And Coach Sherman didn't do that to me. Yeah. He said, well, how are you going to do it? And I wrote out a blueprint right there. Right. I want to, okay. I'm going up the arena two trial. I'm going to make that team. Right. Somebody's going to see me in arena one. I'm going to make that team. Somebody's going to send me to NFL. Europe. I don't know who it is. Right. I'm going to make that team. And then somebody's going to bring me to camp in four years. He said, okay, I'll take you to Tallahassee. Wow. He said, I'll take you to Tallahassee. Wow. And I said, you will? 
He said, "Yeah, he said, I'll, yeah, um, one, one, let's find out when it is. I'll run you. I'll run you up there myself." Wow. And so I was ecstatic. I got tape. I spatted my shoes. I had everything like look like I look like a professional, uh, like a D one college guy coming up to try out. And when I got out of the truck, I looked different than everybody else out there. I looked like an athlete who was prepared to go get, win some a right. spot. Thirty minutes into the workout, G McDowell said. I want to sign you to a two-year deal. Oh wow! You gonna make fifty dollars? You gonna make? You gonna, you gonna make? You gonna make? I forget it. What you gonna make? Two? You gonna make two hundred dollars a week? That's what he said. Oh boy! You gonna make two hundred dollars a week? If you lose, you make one hundred and fifty. <laughs> you, you gotta gonna, pay for the trash. Yeah, the yeah. but it was two hundred dollars a week that yeah. you had a job during the day. Yeah, you played during the night. Yeah. 20 hour bus rides. We didn't have a plane. Ooh. So we would drive buses from Tulsa, from Tallahassee to Tulsa. Oh, uh, you know, wow. Tallahassee to Virginia, Tallahassee everywhere. Uh, just on a bus, on a bus that the beds let down, like the beds go up mm -hmm. and the beds let down for right. like seats. So I got 300 pound guys just laying around everywhere, passing gas and farting. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm I'm this young you know, young rookie, you know, and 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 guys thought I was you know really good. It was like they would say to me all the time, "Man, you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna be in the league." So, Coach Sherman didn't shoot my goals down, and then guys are feeding that. Right. It's all about fertilizer. Yeah. You know, people are fertilizing my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, gosh, you 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 mm -hmm. you keep doing that, man. You're going to the league. Never said it was guys like Tommy Henry who played for Florida State. It was big name guys that played at Florida State in big schools. These were older guys that, that just wanted to play football again. Right. I mean, they were in their late, early thirties. Right. Here I am as a you know young nineteen year old, twenty year old. You know, you know. So they were telling me, "Hey, listen, you're gonna be in the league. You keep that up." Yeah. So they fed all of that fuel that was already. So when I ran that on kickoff, I ran on kickoff like. I'm trying to go to the league. Yeah. Everything I did, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I got to make an impression. Right. And then the next year, I got a call from Ta um, Markham, Tim Markham from T in Tampa Bay Storm. Right. Hey, we heard about you. We heard about you. Know, you, you want to have a little workout with you up here in, Tala in Tampa. You know, we heard a lot of things about you. We want to bring you down here and see what you got. I did the same approach. I came down there and went. Looking the same, spat it. I said, okay, I did it on there. Let me do the same thing. Let me go in there and look like. But when I got out this time, everybody looked like athletes. Yeah. Because <laughs> this yeah. is a step up. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are making six figures yeah. at the time with Arena. Right. And I'm like, oh, these are grown men. And wow. about 40 minutes, 40, 40, 50 minutes into the workout, he walked over to me and said, I, I want to sign you to a three year deal. How about that? How you like that? You make nine hundred a week. I said, "Well, coach, I wasn't making but two hundred a week last year, <laughs> making nine hundred this week." Yeah, and that's what I told him. I said, "I don't plan on being here but one year anyway, coach." Yeah, I'm I'm going to the NFL. Yeah, and, he's, and he kind of laughed, but he said, "Okay, all right, yeah, well, we, yeah. we let's get this thing done." Yeah, signed me to a three year deal. Played there, one year. Was it the star? I just did everything. I just. And guys kept saying me. I, I got pig golf. He played with the Bucks. He's, he played with a few teams. He was an older guy. He was probably in his late thirties, you know. And he said, "Man, he big guy too." He said, "You, you keep it up. You gonna be. You gonna go to. You, you'll make it to the NFL." Right. And says so another guy feeding that same thing. It's mm -hmm. almost like God put people in my path that kept feeding. Right. What he had already planted. Right. And so um, I, I end up. Playing one year there, and I'm like, "Is it gonna happen? You know, is it, this is really happening right, right now?" And I was at the juvenile detention center just working one day, and I was on a kid the rec yard with like 60 kids, and they said, um, "You have a 1045 line too, Mr. Hart. You want us to take a message?" I said, "Yeah, take a message." I got up there, and it was like Scott Cohen from the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, let me retract. The Green Bay Packers first time they called first. Oh, okay. And so they said we want we want to bring you up for a workout. And so I go up to Green Bay and I'm like, and sitting in Brett Favre's locker, and I'm just like, 
this is surreal right now. Yeah. But they're looking for a receiver. In arena, you play receiver DB. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. And I was a good receiver, but I wasn't fast like that. I wasn't no four, 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 three guy. So I knew I couldn't play receiver in the NFL. I'm not fast enough. But I, I was looking at safety. I thought it would bring me. A, they said, "Well, we looking for a receiver." And I was like, "Oh, well, you might have brought me up here for the wrong thing." <laughs> <laughs> but I still give it a shot. Yeah, and, yeah. And I got sent home, and it was like, "We will we'll think about it." You know, yeah. never called. Yeah. I know it would be better. Just, well, just tell uh, yeah, just tell me no. Yeah. And, and God didn't want me to be a cheesehead anyway. Right, he yeah. wanted me to be an eagle. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> so a so, uh, couple weeks later, the eagles called, mm -hmm. and uh, Scott Cohen, and and I said, you know, oh, I love to come out. I went to the vet, and I was slipping. The old vet. I wore, I wore new shoes. I was slipping. <clears throat> I was falling. I was nervous. I just got not you know, signed by one team and I'm like, dang on it. And I'm so nervous and, but I finished everything. I finished. I got up and I just <clears> went <throat> hard. And I came home and I got a call. Hey, listen, we wanna send you over to Europe. You're very raw and we think you got something. Yeah. See if I'd have made Green Bay, it wouldn't have been how I planned it because True. I told Coach Sherman. True. It was he, four steps. Yeah, that's right. So so I planned that and I believed it. Well, there's two things I want to I want to cover real quick. The vet, for those of you who don't know, mm -hmm. the vet had like oh, may, maybe a, this much grass. <laughs> this this like this table. It was, it was like <laughs> it was a, hard. A, a thin rubber. Oh, no, I don't even would it even it, be rubber? Even rubber. That's that's a good word. Is yeah, rubber? Yeah, that's a good word for it. But, but it's like playing on concrete. Yes, literally. <laughs> And they had a jail. Street ball. They had a jail and in the in the facility. My underneath. dad tells my, she. He told my mom that underneath, same thing underneath the stadium and for all the drunks. Yeah, yeah. Under, you're going right to jail. Yeah, you're going straight to jail. <laughs> the, like it, um, straight to the stadium. Jail, yeah, right stadium right. jail. And then, well, it was literally a jail. Yeah, literally. That's how rowdy them people are. Yes. So uh, um, not not only that, but then also people are probably going to be thinking Europe. Like, are you going to? What you going abroad like for? <laughs> are you going to study? Or, like nobody really remembers NFL, NFL Europa. Yeah, and they sh and they should because it gave guys like me, uh, Kurt Warner, mm -hmm. a lot of guys. Yeah. that I mean, when you, I'm glad the XFL's back. Yes, because it gives guys uh, yeah. opportunity. I, I agree. guys like our guy Carson. Yep, Carson Wells. He deserves to be in the NFL. Absolutely. I don't get it. I don't either. I, I mean, I've seen an, I've seen talent on my teams that I, he's better than. Yeah. And I'm like, I just don't get it. Yeah. And timing is everything. Everything, is. everything don't happen in your time happens in God's time. Right. So, he may be not not ready for it just right, right now. So, just, I think he another year. Well, after this year, I think he he'll get he goes in and continues and do what he's doing and right. do some good things. He'll he'll be ready. He'll be just um, fine. But NFL Europe was amazing. Yeah. And so they sent me over there. Philadelphia sent me over there to Ryan Fire. And so when you go to NFL Europe, your their your team logo is on the back of the helmet, like whatever team sent you over there. So all these guys are walking around with different things on the back of the helmets, and you're looking like, who's he with? Who is he with? <laughs> Who is he with? And so I end up going over there playing at Ryan Fire in Dusseldorf, Germany. Um, and I didn't play a lot. Gotcha. Because I was, they sent too many safeties over on one team. So I was like the fifth safety behind some big, and I was just like so frustrated yeah. because I'm like, I'm trying to go over to NFL Europe and I'm not getting any film. Right. They're not going to keep me. So when a player gets hurt on one team and they need him on another team, right? they'll just they'll say, ship you. Ship you over there to where So they, they ship me to Amsterdam. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy! You're like ooh. ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to Amsterdam. Oh, oh my god! So I go to Amsterdam, and I <laughs> and I and I first thing I say is I I hear about this red light dish. Yeah, fix. yeah. I'm yeah. like, what are these red lights for? You about to find out? I'm about to find. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you first you go over there, and it's just. It's yeah. bikes everywhere. Yeah. It's like a million bikes but everywhere. It's beautiful it's there. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I see all the pictures and stuff. I've never been there. It, uh, I would love stay to go there. Stay out of there. Let, and that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine, he he went there one time and stayed at like a um 
Uh, what, what do you? What are brothel? They not a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can stand them. Like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> but you know, not, um, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, it, it, but it's like they have bunk beds. And yeah, stuff like yeah. That. I know. What you're um, about. anyways, it'll come to me later. But anyways, um, people are like probably like, uh, it's this. I'm like, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> but um, they he went there and he said Man, it was awesome. It, it's, it, it was a, just a whole other. You know, it's a whole other world. Yeah. Um, so you go in there and you, and you see all the red lights in the red light district and you're like amazed. You're really amazed yeah. at it. Um, and then and I've never, ever smoked marijuana in my life, ever. I don't. I never will. Yeah. Um, and people are like, you haven't? No, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I'm, afraid, I'm afraid of what, it might, what yeah. I might do. Yeah, I might, you never know. I might you never know. run in front of a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I might, so I, I stay away from stuff like that. Um but I did go in to see what the, the, these cof- these shops were made. And you literally can go on a menu and they put a menu down in front of you and you order like you're ordering at a restaurant. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. And they bring it to you and they bring it to you and they, they kind of say um, whatever they say in German. <laughs> good dog. Yeah, good dog. Yeah, there you go. It's and trying I, our and, finest. And so I learned and I say, Dankeschön. And they say, Bitteschön. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, right yeah. I want to learn a few, you're, a couple you're, words. You're, fit, you're fitting right in. You're I mean, fitting right in. Yeah. Guten Morgen. <laughs> like good morning. <laughs> you're like, what do you say about Morgan and Morgan? Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. <laughs> they got that guy's everywhere. They got that guy's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good time. Um, yeah. But uh, it was a great experience. Learning experience. Learning yeah, experience. I would tell course. anybody. I don't know about now because stuff's you know, so crazy you know, right now yeah. in different states, yeah. places. But it, if they can get out, go see other places, get outside the box. They, yeah. And football is taking me over there, and, and, and I got to go there, and then I came back. And well, when I went to Amsterdam, I had to play against Ryan Fire, the team oh, that, the that team, you there. The team that didn't. I was trying to kill them. Yeah, literally. I think I had like fourteen tackles. And I still wa- I watched the clip, I um, watched the VCR tape the uh, other day. Coach Sherman recorded it, and he and I got it. And I watched it probably like a week ago in the gym, and I didn't realize I was literally flying around trying. Yeah, there's Hart again. There's that guy Hart again. There's that. And I was literally trying to because I wanted to show them. Yeah. Y'all should have kept me. Y'all yeah, you sent me way over passed here. Passed on me. Yeah. You passed on me because of these guys. Right. I'm gonna show you how much better I am right. than these guys. And I think I had 13, 14 tackles, and I was flying around, and and I came back to Philadelphia. And what was wild about Philadelphia is I was a nobody to those veterans. Yeah. Brian Dawkins and Lito Shepard and Al mm-hmm. Harris and Bobby Taylor and Troy Vincent and all these legends. Mm-hmm. Like, who are you? Yeah. They were like, who, who are you? Where you come from? Yeah. And I was like, I should have told Lito, you, I'm from Florida. I'm from Florida. But yeah. I said, I said, I came from, Warren <clears throat> Sapp said something to me in a game. <laughs> He was a trash talker. Oh, I, he, I, yeah. He I said something it. to me in a game. He said, you ain't going to Central Florida. I said, I went to Central Florida Community College. Because <laughs> he's thinking UCF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I ain't go to UCF. I went to Central Florida Community College. He said, where is that at anyway? <laughs> you know you know what's funny is I was listening to a Bucks, um, a Bucks game, and they were playing the Cowboys. And Sap was still playing, obviously, this mm-hmm. back in the day. And um, I was listening to it on the radio. I went, to, I went to town to get something. I put the game on the radio. And the guy, it wasn't Gene, whatever the guy is, the, the Deckenhoff or whatever the guy is that does the Seminole thing. Oh, yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. It was another guy. And he was like, yeah. He was like, um, you know, um, Troy Hamburg, he's from, mm-hmm. um, he's from Tampa. <laughs> Cause he's trying to make him feel like he was close. Yeah. And the guy says, <laughs> the other guy goes, "No, he's not. He's from Lacoochee." Hey, Lacoochee. He goes, "That's like saying Warren Sapp's from Pl- uh, from a pop key from pop- Plymouth City." From Plymouth City. Like, you gotta say where they're you gotta from. Say where you're from? <laughs> That's why I do. I'll get, never forget that. I do get that because people say, "Oh, you're from Bushnell," and yeah. I have to say, "I went to school in Bushnell." Yeah. I'm from Webster. Yeah. And uh, not to take anything from Bushnell, yeah. but. You know, I, I like to give Webster his props because that's literally where right, I'm from. Right. Um, but I mean, going over to Europe was great. Then I came back to Philly, came back to, and this what this where I knew that I wasn't in control of my journey, is when I got to Philadelphia, and they asked me what number I wanted, and I said, I want 42 because Ronnie Lott. Yeah. They said, 
Man. No, and, and, yeah, Ronnie Lott was my guy. Was, was, Forty two is not available. And I'm like, Pick another number because it was a it was a veteran that had it. Oh yeah. And I said, they said two numbers are available. It was something in thirty three. I said, we're gonna give you a thirty three. I was like, okay. I didn't think nothing of it. Well, Jesus died at age thirty three. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, so it's like I didn't think about this stuff. And then Eagles practice in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. That's right. So an eagle is a biblical bird. They didn't want me to be a cheesehead. So I'm putting all this stuff together. Right. Like, why eagles? Why this number? Yeah. Bethlehem, yes. Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's like, you said it. You you believed it. Right. You had faith of a mustard seed. Right. You sat in that office and you said it. Right. You believe in your ability. Right. I'm going to put the people in your journey, in your life, to keep influencing that what you said right and you and i'm going to show you that i'm I, i'm the reason you're here because mm -hmm. i was I, you know, it's a lot of great talent that's a lot of good guys that are better yeah, than me yeah. but i'm like why me you know what and they wanted me to be an eagle for my community for for my town for right. so i got to philadelphia and now i'm number 33 and I, i'm putting all this stuff together and you know i get <laughs> I'm, I'm flying around yeah and the coach is yelling at me left and right, you know, you know, and he said to me, and I'll never forget it with a raspy voice. He was a defense coordinator, like a legend. And he said to me, if I stop yelling at you, yeah, that's when you worry. Yeah, that's when you're supposed to be yeah, That's when you worry. Right. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Right. I'm not wasting my breath. But right. he saw something and, he's, and he just was drilling me. And I'm like, Brian Dawkins doing the same thing that I'm doing. I yeah. mean, he's doing the same yeah. mistake sometimes. Why are you yelling at me? Right. But he's he saw something in me. Right. And so he uh he told me that and I took it. And every day I was listening for that yell. I was listening for him to yell at me. Come on, coach, yell at me one time. <laughs> Let me know I'm yeah. still here. And so I ended up um making a name of myself and, and and I always told myself, if you're where the ball is, the camera's gonna see you because the camera's gonna follow the ball. Right. So right. everywhere, Absolutely. everywhere the ball was, I was running. Yeah. Real, I, 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 no matter what, I made two thirty three was in front of the camera. I was looking back, to make sure thirty three yeah. in the camera. And then the coach would say, yeah. "One number thirty three, you're all over the place in the meeting in front yeah. of all the veterans." Yeah. Thanks for watching part one of this two part segment. Stay tuned for part two.